Hello, on behalf of Managing Director Al Hartley, I want to welcome you to the Virginia Wadsworth Work Center for the Performing Arts 2020-2021 virtual season. I'm Roger Ellis, and I am here with Angeli Hutchinson, Renee Rush, and Margaret Lorena Kemp. Like all theaters, we have had to pivot, reimagine our art form, and find new ways to connect. Antigone Now is at the intersection of all of these. The work is so proud to support this piece. One of the great things about Northwestern is that our artistic community is actively engaged in making work all over the world. And this project epitomizes the kind of creative thinking in the face of a challenge that we want to model for our students. We are delighted to partner with UC Davis, Department of Theater and Dance, to invite our community to experience some of the great work they are doing. We want to welcome our panelists. And so I'm going to pass the baton over to Angeli Hutchinson, who is a director, divisor, and professor at Bucknell University, where she received the Bucknell Presidential Award for Teaching Excellence. She is a graduate of the MFA directing program at Northwest University. And so we are really happy to have her with us to moderate this conversation. Thank you so much, Roger. Excellent. Um, hello and welcome to our panel presentation today on the University of California Davis's groundbreaking online production of Antigone Now. Um, as Roger said, my name is Anjali Deshpande Hutchinson. Um, I'm a professor at Bucknell University and I love being an alum of Northwestern's MFA program in directing. Delighted to be back with you guys today. Um, and I am excited to speak about Antigone Now with the directors. Um, UC Davis's Associate Professor of Theater and Dance, Margaret Lorena Kemp, and UC Davis's 2020 Granada Artist in Resident, Sinead Ruscha, also with us today, uh, Associate Choreographer on the process, um, our own Northwestern University's Assistant Professor of Theater, Roger Ellis. Thank you all for being here. Excited for this conversation. Thank you. Um, okay, why don't we start way, way back at the very beginning, um, way back before the pandemic. So my questions to you, Margaret and Sinead, welcome. Um, as the co-directors of this piece, what was the original intent for Antigone Now? Was it Antigone Now? Was it Antigone? Um, and how do you guys know each other? Um, why did you decide to work on this piece? Well, it was Antigone and I started working on lots of different translations of it, actually about two years ago in acting class, sort of deconstructing the ideas um, with the students and we had an opportunity to bring a, another artist in for the Granada and I contacted Sinead with this idea of working on Antigone, but and it was intended to be for the stage. So it really started two years ago and then when winter came and started to see the writing on the wall, I, I, I never thought that we weren't going to do the show. I just started thinking of how we were going to do the show. And the first thing I did was starting, I have a, a thriving um, solo practice is how can I, that includes digital work and I've been using digital work since 2015. Um, how can I take some of those elements that I've already been using and make them an ensemble practice? So that was really how I started to form the idea and when it was pretty well cooked like i know this can work this is how it will work i contacted Sinead and said uh i have a, I have a plan this is what we're gonna do <laughs> we won't take no for an answer <laughs> yeah That's i don't want to say that we were we were there was already a thought before um of working with the live version of antigone already experimenting with that. So um, before we knew about uh, lockdown and before we knew it would be digital, but um, was the idea of displacing the traditional notion of the chorus um, to the protagonist. So um, we already had this idea that we would do in the live show that uh, the character of Antigone would be played by an ensemble um, of actors um, and that the chorus would be played by a single actor. We were already thinking about that or having that conversation. So, so when lockdown hit and Margaret proposed the digital version and making a performance film instead, um, um, and that she was in the process of casting and doing auditions uh, before I came, um, then it just began to evolve this idea that perhaps the cast is all female 
um, and then perhaps the cast is all Antigone. So there, there, there was a was a seed of something that was going in a direction, but that would have stopped at a certain point. But somehow, with lockdown, it uh, it it expanded, escalated in a way, or expanded to um, to fit the form, if you like. Um, and I guess how Margaret and I know each other is through the Michael Chekhov acting work over the years we've come together in the Michael Chekhov training um, as as performers and as teachers and as artists collaborating at the conferences and so we share that interest and know each other over the years through through that work. Um, Junaid do you I know that Margaret said that she had some um, background in uh, multimedia performance did you have any film experience before this? I've no I've never made a film before Ever. Um, I've been involved a lot in the edits of my own live work um, and I'm very heavily involved with sound um, so that's very much a part of my practice but I'd never yeah I'm not an editor I am um, but I am a photographer I'm a very keen uh, amateur photographer so um, and I really care about design and sonography in my own live shows so I have that aesthetic concern if you like in my work and I'm always searching for the right scenographic form for the for the show that feels like a huge part of my dramaturgical and directorial practice if you like um but no and, and people have often said to me oh you should make a film you should make a film with your photography and your sonography interests or whatever but so this was a tremendous opportunity to work with Margaret um who has made films and uh to learn and also to feel yeah just to really feel that I could do that, uh, collaborate and um, find a way to collaborate with Margaret to find a way where um, she could hold the reins on the edit, but that I could still bring my expertise to the conversation, even though she was certainly um, the one at home <laughs> doing the edit and moving those things around. So it, that was very fun and very enjoyable and, and really, um, really, you know, expanded uh, my own work my own uh, sense of what it is to work in my own practice so I'm really grateful for that opportunity. Margaret it strikes me when you said you never even considered not doing the show because boy when spring hit everyone was cancelling shows everywhere we were all like impossible we can't move forward um, and nobody even I mean some people thought about zoom readings but nobody really thought about making a film at that moment especially since we couldn't be together the traditional way of making film is on set together. So I just find that really interesting that you were, you didn't even think about it. You didn't think about canceling. No, we had already cast the show and a lot of the students were really excited. They never, some, most of them had never been in shows. And I just thought, this is, this is where we step up. We don't, I don't know. I always tell my students, it, you have to finish it. I don't <laughs> care what the, you, because finishing is training. Everyone knows how to start but rarely do we get to the finish line. So it was just in terms of what are you teaching students? That was really um, important to me. And I just knew, I could just said, oh yeah, this is how we'll do it. And quite honestly, when I presented it originally to the department, they were like, eh, really? You know, you don't have to do it. I'm like, yeah, I do actually. <laughs> And what a gift for your students, man, because like the international heartbreak of not being able to do shows that people auditioned and rehearsed for was like vivid across the theater community. So yeah, what a gift. Um, Sinead talked a little bit about choreography and interest in movement. Margaret, can you also speak to your interest in movement in relation to the chorus and how you brought Roger along? Well, um, I'm in my own, again, just came out of my own practice. I, I mm -hmm. often use elements of African-American social dance as just a way of moving through space and also thinking about activating space and just visualizing my own work. I, I and, and I, I love to collaborate. So for me, it was saying, I really want to bring this element um, and it's looking for the collaborator. And I thought it would be very useful to have a shared vocabulary like Sinead and I have a shared vocabulary from Michael Chekhov work. I've been, I met Roger mm, last year, last summer, and we've worked a lot with Mary Overly 
And um, within that, um, Roger and I started these weekly uh, cafes of conversation <laughs> around mm -hmm. Mary Overly's work and thinking about that as a type of pedagogy that could be used with actors. So um, I thought it would be a, a good mix. Uh, as a collaborator, we already have a shared vocabulary. So Roger came after um, it was cast and we'd already adapted the script. Um, Sinead did most of the moving around of the language. And um, then it started to think about where where is the chorus in cyberspace? And how do we manage that? Because it was a looming part of Antigone. Um, so I think, Sinead, I, you recall um, that one of the actors made this, um, Rahina made that gorgeous gesture. And it started us to think about, oh, what if everyone had a gesture? And then we started actually pulling from the actors and from some of Sinead's um, offerings of things for actors to explore, like the hand washing. And let, thinking about that as the vocabulary, the, the starting point for what a movement sequence would be like. And then I asked Roger, I called him Roger at, um, I don't know, 11 o'clock in the morning and three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, Roger sent back a score um, and I thought it was probably a good match. That's fantastic. So. Um, you, I heard two things that I'm interested in. Um, one was that some of these students were new to acting, and the other was that you were using vocabulary, uh, Chekhov, Michael Chekhov vocabulary, and also Mary Overly vocabulary, and sort of threading those through. Did you, did part of the process involve training the students in this, um, in these techniques? Well, it's sort of as much as you need to train them in the rehearsal process. I'm pointing to my living room because that's where. <laughs> Right. right, that was the rehearsal room. Right, you know, it was working with atmosphere. It was working with polarity. It was working with um, molding and not just the, the body and the space, but thinking about using the language, whatever language was used and allowing that to um, um, impact helping the actors to, once they left the living room, to take those tools out into the world where they were creating the play Amazing. and see if we can bring my, another reason I'm always asking about choreography is because I'm very interested in actors bringing their bodies to the performance. So um, I think maybe Sinead, do you wanna talk a little bit about the offerings like around the, the soil and things uh, around that? I mean, but, oh, but maybe I should finish. And also for Mary Overly, just the idea that, um, yes, there is a little bit of training, but what can you do over the thing? And if you've never been in an acting class, you sort of have to choose what's, what you know that you can convey in a short amount of time and get the actor to feel confident enough to explore that in performance largely by themselves. Right, but how exciting that you were able to do that digitally, like with everyone in their own spaces, but really embodying some really exciting physical movement. I mean, we didn't even know that we could do that in that point in <laughs> time. Like, can we make an ensemble through this yes. medium? Like, yes. Well, yes. It, I mean, people can, it, there's something still about showing up, all yes. showing up at the same time. And it may be in all of those little squares, but but that's still a phenomenon. I mean, we're doing it now and, and, um, and trying to connect and understand each other. And, and, and so that's still such a profoundly human impulse, I think. And so there still, there still was that. Um, and so that we could start a rehearsal with an imaginative exercise. Okay, we weren't under any illusion that we were teaching the work of Michael Chekhov or really training anyone, but, but you know, they were a very open, receptive, uh, a bunch of um, people, artists, women. And so you drop a little seed of an imaginative provocation or a physical exploration and, uh, and people really explored it. And I guess when we, when we gave, to go back to Margaret's uh, thought about, we gave some provocations, like we gave a, an image list at the beginning of we made a list of what might be potential shots um, that people could just go off in their own time to do. And they were things that were really 
drawn from the play, you know, the, the earth, digging the earth, um, uh, the, the howling wind, washing hands, rituals of, of prayer or of preparation. And, and it seems to me that there was a combination of that and then some students' responses like Regina's image by the window, that it feels to me those, those were a basis then against which uh, Roger uh, responded. It seems to me, Roger, then you came into those and, and basically had a sense of how to stylize that in an ensemble framework on screen. Would you well, say that's right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just speaking to this idea about chorus and being together over the internet, even across distance. One of the ways that we can be together is through dance, through movement. And so much of the movement was inspired out of what was already happening in the room. And I really believe that when artists working well, it starts to tell you what it wants to be. And uh, Sinead's already spoken and Margaret has already spoken about this idea of deconstruction of like, what are the elements in this piece? Okay, we have the desire to connect through this window, but you're not able to connect seeing outside of the window, the camera's on the other side of it. And so my role was to help the actors understand and embody how to be together in very, very precise choreography of the eyes, of breath, of gesture, and not necessarily, you know, doing big kicks or big turns, but actually like, are your eyes searching? Are they selecting something? Are they sustaining uh, their interest on something? Um, really small, very micro kind of movements. And then pairing that with some of the other beautiful sequences that Margaret and Sinead put together of running and digging and all of that. It's just extraordinary. So I, this has been a dream to work on as a choreographer because uh, as Margaret mentioned, she thinks about everything as dance. Um, and I really believe that as well. And when you, the benefit of editing a film or creating a film or working in a way that's not traditional is that you, 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 by accident and intentionally work within the form and stretch the form in ways that otherwise might not happen. Because all of a sudden, if you're not able to be in the same set together, as you said, Anjali, uh, what is possible? How can you look for the yes? And um, yeah, it was just a wonderful process to be a part of and to work with the actors on that. And, and eventually what I ended up doing was recording my voice saying all the movements <laughs> and then they listened to that as they recorded themselves doing it, so they're all together. So uh, there's an added challenge of doing anything in unison. On oh my Zoom. gosh, yes. Because there's a seven, second millis uh, seven millisecond delay already, and then- And then you've got actors from all over the world. Actors from all over the world, different <laughs> camera, different frames, different recording devices. And so to make something look cohesive is quite challenging in a way <laughs> not as challenging in a room that you're sharing together. And I've had versions of it where, you know, it felt like we did practice versions where it worked really well and it was really in sync. And then when we were through the software of really trying to record it, of course, you know, there's just internet glitches and um, it, it was all off. And um, I was like, it's all off, it's no longer in sync. And then I'm finally Roger and uh, Margaret were like, so that's, so that's what it is. That's what it is. We have to embrace that um, because that's what it is. So, so yeah. And I just wanted to mention Ishan Oz, um, who um, recorded it in Twitch for us after we just embraced what it was and said, okay, well, what does that look like if it's a choice um, in the virtual world? And it added another layer to um, the work that's invaluable. Fantastic. Um, Roger, I just wanted to touch back in terms of like the workshops that you did with students as a choreographer. Am, am I hearing that mostly it was it was some like going back and forth between um, organic work that you were creating with the students and, and then also like really specific work that you were giving to the students so that they could embody. It was like a give and take a little bit. Right, sliding that spectrum between what kind of choreography step shapes you're receiving and what things are blossoming organically out of your own body, bringing those things in, in conversation with each other. 
And I think one of the things that's really interesting about this having been recorded in Twitch and then also just saying, yes, there are going to be some discrepancies between these multiple different bodies in multiple different countries and time zones who are interpreting the same movement to the best of their ability, but they all have different perspectives and they're going to do the movement differently and let's accept that. Um, so I think in addition to, uh, oh gosh, I totally, um, pause for a second. Um, can you remind me of the question? The specifics, like when you're the question. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just demonstrating a human moment of losing your train of thought and then coming back, you know? <laughs> that was um, so yeah, I mean, that's all part of this living, breathing thing we call performance. And then how do we, I don't, I think of this as a film, a hybrid project that has been spoken about as by the co-directors. But I think what, what allows us to feel like something that is theatrical. And I think it's the handprint of the, the fingerprints of the makers, which can be something that's kind of a mistake or kind of a slight discrepancy or isn't completely ironed out. And uh, there's something a little punk rock perhaps about that needed in order for something to truly be theatrical because that's why we go to the theater to have our heartbeats sync up with other spectators, to breathe the same air together, to have a different experience in the presence of others. And so uh, I really love playing with, okay, what are we really sticking to in terms of like a really solid form? And then what are the things that are we allowing to blossom out of the actors organically? Um, Oh, yeah, thinking, and thinking about what theater is like, because Roger and I are, are working together on Click. Um, I mentioned to Roger just the other day um, that maybe part of thinking about this new theater is also thinking about why we make theater, not just why people come to theater. And there's that sensation of the ensemble and Sinead and I decided very early on that we needed one day where everybody was called. It doesn't matter if you have to be at rehearsal at 3 a.m. or 1 a.m., everybody needs to be there. And we had different guests coming in at that time. So there was a sensation of what's new going to be offered in that moment that we'll all have a chance to um, learn. And Sinead was able to lead a process um, in that time also. And we had a virtual green room where the actors would hang out and chat. And I think that that is a element of this virtual world that needs to be um, very carefully attended to. It's not just bringing the audience, it's actually um, bringing the artists into the space to collaborate. Right, because you can see that community, even though as an audience member, it's a super intimate, um, you know, like viewing experience for you watching it, you could see the community that is that has happened with the actors when you give them an opportunity to create that in the space with each other. I'm also super interested in your guys' ability to go back and forth between like, we're gonna have a physical workshop, but then here's a list of really structured shots. So like it usually goes in one direction, like organic, organic. And then like when we get to production, it'll be form, right? But for you guys, it seemed like you were constantly going back and forth between like, generating content and material, but then also giving them really structured things that they had to do. I think that's right. But I, I think that is that is theater making. I mean, from a director's point of view, I think that's that's what you're doing all the time. You're you're trying to ignite and open uh, and develop. Um, and then you're going in for the kill to kind of catch that thing and pull it out and uh, develop something because it's always this thing of I think I think of theater making or directing as as a, a, con, a, a constant negotiation between the tight and the loose uh, so but it's not that it's all loose and then at the end it's tight it's that actually in in really trying to develop some things quite precisely early on in a in a in a tight way that you understand you understand something about the form that you're making and then you go back into the looser, more organic thing. So, um, I mean, you said it very well, Anjali, um, in, in a way that uh, speaks to me and speaks, it feels like it speaks of this process. I think also because it's on camera that then things just are very, uh, they, are, they are fixed, they are there. 
they are or they're either going to make it into the film or they're not and unless this this and this changes about it it's not going to make it into the film and often margaret and i had an impulse like we really want this we don't know where quite what but we really this is going to be in it so we're going to we're going to wade in to try and get the shot uh, that that we want. Um, so, so yeah, tight and loose, I think, is is the process. Okay. And the other day, I was also thinking about Guillermo Pena, who I had the pleasure of working with, and I just remember <laughs> sometimes they'll just say, "That's the image. That's the image," just over and over again. And I think that there's something about having this list, you know, this where I think um, Sinead said it beautifully, like paired the script back to its bare bones. It's about grief. What's the image? How do, and not only our image, the invitation was to the actors. What are, what are your cultural associations? What are your sonic associations with these elements that we've said, we're just going to, hone in on these elements. And when you speak about those images and those elements, um, you're also speaking about this idea of movement and gestures, right? Like very specific gestures. And did you end up using all of the gestures or were there some that were like, not you couldn't quite capture, you know, like I'm just wondering about that great, the specificity of the movement in the piece. I know that we didn't get them all <laughs> for, I, I, because we didn't, um, but, it wasn't for lack of trying. Some actors in this process, sometimes you like, we ask somebody to do something for click. Some of the students don't have access to a, a sink that by themselves, they would have to go in and be in a trough of sinks with many people. That's not the idea. Or um, the walking, the walking, the impulse was to walk in the distance until we can't see you anymore. And we only actually got two um, but out of but all I, of them. Yeah, that's right. And interestingly, and sorry, Margaret, but the I was thinking about the running too in, in relation to that because we'd had this strong sense, both of us, of of oh, there's a moment where Antigone decides she's gonna she's gonna bury the body, she's gonna break the law, she's gonna do it. It's an illicit thing. And and we had a sense of that 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 would be running it would be all the antigones running and again we gave that as a as a as a command if you like um and and again we didn't get one sequence of running that was the running um but what we did get is that we got a collage of multiple antigones uh running and so what happened is that we got the running we needed but it became it became a collective it became maybe five or six shots, five or six actresses versions of running. And then it was Margaret and I working with the rhythm of the edit. And then it was Lex Kusanke, the sound designer, uh, uh, scoring that. And so, so the image, the image was got, but it was got uh, through this collective means. It was, it didn't need to be one person nailing the image. It could be, it was the joy of the ensemble in that it could be achieved uh, as, a, as an ensemble, as a collective. And, and felt very much like you were saying, like a collage, so that it felt poetic to see lots of different interpretations of that, which I thought was so beautiful. Um, you yeah. also spoke about this idea of, um, I know that your research, Sinead, focuses on the, um, the polyphonic and specifically polyphonic characterization. So can you can you define that term for us and maybe how like this process was complicated or amplified the need to explore that? Mm. I mean, it sounds a very grand term, I realize when you say it like that, but it's really working with this notion of polyphony. Um, and I, really what it means polyphonic characterization is that a character is played by multiple actors, uh, potentially of different uh, genders and different ages, different cultures. Um, so it's something I've been exploring over the years. I started with uh, the character of Iago in Othello played as an ensemble of five, five men. And just this sense of that there's something about that character's um, slipperiness, uh, mischievousness that can't be contained in one body that, that that Iago for me was kind of like an organism he's kind of everywhere and he's mm -hmm. constantly changing face so that the actual body of the character changes um 
And so I've been exploring that. I did it a, a couple of years ago, a version of Cole Tess's Night Just Before the Forests, which is a monologue and, and had it as a sonic performance work with five actors. Um, and that was about exploring the kind of displacement of an immigrant who didn't have the, the luxury of belonging anywhere, didn't have the luxury of a stable fixed foundation or identity. And so it, literally his psyche the psychology was dispersed across these five bodies. And so here, you know, with Antigone, again, Margaret and I were talking about these ideas and this notion of Antigone's grief is, is almost too big for her. It's, 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 she's engulfed by this, uh, this grief and it cannot, it can't be contained in, in one body. So, so I, I guess I'm interested, I'm interested in this sense of, of thinking about psychology. I'm an actor trainer, yes, I'm an acting coach. Um, I'm interested in characterization and psychology, but I'm also interested in form. So I'm, I'm interested in this notion of, of can psychologies be a little bit detached from the single identity actor and live a little bit more compositionally in, in, in scenography, in the form of the work at large. And so here in Antigone Now, as it escalated in collaboration with Margaret, it was it took this idea of the polyphonic characterization. It took a new dimension in collaboration uh, uh, with Margaret because suddenly then there were twelve of them, and uh, and so um, and and on screen. And so, what what was interesting about that is that it felt like it became. It it brought up the notion for me about. The, uh, about the chorus, the Greek chorus. Um, so while, you know, Margaret and I, this is an old joke between us now, how we've been saying how we both find the Greek chorus quite boring and um, that we needed to do something about it, you know, in our stage production. And so we were saying, well, we'll have a chorus of Antigones and we'll have one person as the chorus. But then what, be what became clear in this process of Antigone now is that in this ensemble of actresses playing Antigone, suddenly we regained something or, or I contacted, recontacted the, the feeling for the chorus, the idea of the civic chorus, the collective, our, our human, humanity is, uh, is our, our collective humanity and it's somehow the, somehow and I, and, and I guess Margaret and I only really understood this quite close to the end uh, really, um, this idea of oh we recuperated the chorus for ourselves in some kind of way in this moment of lockdown. And so the polyphonic characterization uh, expanded um, in throughout this exploration and took a new surprising form that I could never have predicted. You know, what I'm, I love about what you said is this idea of like, it's, it's many voices right? Like these many different people playing Antigone, but it's also the Antigone in all of these very different people and exploring it. And especially against the backdrop of the pandemic where we're all having this very common experience in very different ways. It, it was so resonant to see them all sort of experience this like communal grief and um, the communal pushback against like, uh, un, you know, like laws that were unethical, right? So, so interesting. Um, you know, and foretelling so much as it was still in spring <laughs> before we even got to the summer. Um, but that being said, I was also interested in like, okay, talk to us about some of the challenges and setbacks, right? You had students in all different countries. Um, you were working with what film equipment they may or may not have. Did people all have phones? Like talk to us about some of the challenges. Yeah, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm a big person that, that focuses on yes. So what somebody might, um, think of as a challenge, I just say, oh, okay, that's how that's going to work. <laughs> For example, Veronica, one of our beautiful actors, came to us in rehearsal. Remember that rehearsal? I want to speak with you privately, Sinead and Margaret. My Antigone doesn't talk. I won't, I'm not going to say any words. And I was like, Okay, yeah, that's well. You still want to be in it, right? Yeah, it's still. I want to do it. I'm excited. Like, <laughs> Sinead and I are like, okay. I think some people, directors, would say that's a challenge. You've been cast. You have lines. It's time for you to say them instead of saying, okay, what 
will this actor bring? This is act, seeing it as, an, as a wonderful opportunity. Um, and I would say that the only, I think maybe it's more of a challenge for people who are um, very set in the um, constructs that are offered to them in acting classes around arcs and um, motivations and things like that, that when you are really moving to a visual storytelling, you might need to let go of those reins a little bit. So I wasn't challenged by, I didn't find it, it took a long time to edit, but I didn't find it challenging actually. Right, like some people might find it challenging that your actors all are speaking different languages and yet you sort of embraced and threaded it through right into oh, it. Oh, that's because I do that all the time. I, <laughs> I look at how many different accents can I get on this stage to like kind of mess people's minds up. <laughs> Or like really be representative of the community that's watching it. So beautiful and a part of it, obviously, you know, so beautiful. Right on. I, mean, I probably, I'm a bit grumpier about the, um, about the challenges than Marla. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably the naysayer. <laughs> I'm the worrier, uh, the worrier on the, but, but, but. Um, but I, I'd say a, a challenge for me was, um, uh, was the time zone, uh, the, t the time difference. So, so there was, of course, it was interesting in another way because I would see the films the next morning uh, and not the night before, and I would see, so there was always this, so there was that, but, but I think there was a sense of, and maybe it's just, it's just a difference that I don't, um, I haven't had that much experience with yet, but um, when working on a live show in rehearsals, as we all know, a part of the process is about immersion and concentration and staying inside something for a long time, doing long uh, improvisations or long rehearsals. And a kind of sense that everybody just goes into the zone uh, together. And um, I found that to, to try to find the zone or to try to find the flow uh, of working very difficult here uh, and I would have long conversations with with uh, Margaret really every every day Margaret would get up early so that so that we could talk and, and part of those conversations you know they were definitely about the films and what are we going to do in rehearsal tonight but they were also about our lives and how are you today and what's going on but also in hindsight I realized it was all, they were also about trying to keep the flow <laughs> trying to contact the flow or trying to find a way to be inside this process that i'm i'm also outside in in in, in some strange way and um that was it was a kind there was a psychic existential <laughs> negotiation um and and, and giving up some uh, giving up the feeling I normally have um, of, of a certain amount of control. Uh, and Sinead, so. did you ever feel like, um, what are we making? What is even happening? <laughs> like, like so many of us are feeling right now when we're putting together these works and we're like, is this, is this gonna be something? Cause not seeing it edited, you're just collecting all this footage, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Often, often I thought that. Um, but I always think that about everything, even <laughs> in its life. <laughs> I think that to the last moment. Um, I'm probably a more paranoid maker than Margaret is. <laughs> <laughs> You're got, you guys are a good balance. You balance each other out in all the best ways. And I just want to speak, I don't know if we have time to go a little bit back to the idea of the chorus, mm. but I very strongly feel the same element um, bubbling to the surface in in some of the same ways in some ways very differently in the process with with click um that i'm roger and i are working on right now um and it's really it's very juicy there's a we're still here um as human beings um uh, in ways that i think many people aren't sensitive to mm -hmm. and ensemble making because now we actually have two ensembles. We have a Northwestern cast and a UC Davis cast that only comes together once a week. And again, we have the three different countries and all the different time zones and finding a way for 
the course is necessary. It's a necessary unit. Um, even if this were a show without a chorus, I think we need to have that sensation of the chorus in the rehearsal process inside of this space. Right on. And it's a great kind of pedagogical exploration for students, especially in this moment where our global consciousness is being raised so much. And so what is it to expand our previous notions of what ensemble is and can be? Can we expand beyond tribalism and actually um, allow our experiences to run through all of us? Right on, and the accessibility that you've created that you can make bridges where there, there wasn't a way to do that before. So exciting. Um, can you speak just a little bit more about the Click project and when does that go up and, and what's the, yeah, what's the heart of that? Well, again, I, I, I turned to Roger um, just originally thinking about choreography um, and one conversation led to another and we decided that it would be more useful for us to completely collaborate. So um, Roger is again leading in choreography, but we are co-directing um, this piece. And our, and our first question is, what is my body on the internet? Oh, and I'm going to let Roger speak a little bit more about it. <laughs> oh, wow. What is my body in the internet, internet right? Uh, well, it's the response to Click by Jacqueline Goldfinger. And rather than doing the play completely as written, Due to Margaret's pre-existing relationship with the playwright, um, Goldfinger has allowed us to deconstruct the piece and to respond to it um, with a 14-member cast of college students who play all of the characters together in, in concert. Um, I'm primarily entering through the world of dance and movement and choreography, and then Margaret is primarily working with the UC Davis students uh, through a text-driven process. And we're just going to allow those experiences to arc together and see what comes of it. So it is going to debut on December 9th. Um, and we're in the midst of rehearsal with that. And it does have a live component. So it's not entirely pre-recorded, um, which is really rehearsing those live moments is gorgeous. <laughs> super happy. You could have said anything there. You could have said terrifying. You could have <laughs> like exhausting. You could have said something. <laughs> oh, it's not. It's, it's, it gives me life. It's, I love it. Yeah. It's fantastic. I'm super excited for that. And um, yeah, I mm -hmm. hope to hear about more. But I have one last question for today um, for all of you guys, actually. And that is, what was the student experience? What did you hear back from the students after all was said and done, the students who worked on this piece? How did they feel about it at the end? How did they interact with it? Well, I'll say that one interesting thing at the very end, two, I'm going to answer two ways and then invite everyone else. Um, one is we asked students to record the moment that they didn't get a chance to explore. Um, and I remember when we got that back, Sinead, we both wished we had another two weeks because it seemed like they just were starting to own the process. And, um, and also Sinead invited them to record themselves talking about the process. And it was really hard for the students um, because I found out more about how we don't empower actors. They are very willing to do whatever you tell them to do. But when you say, we rehearsed, now go out there and do it. See you tomorrow. <laughs> it's a whole nother thing. And they, it was very hard for them to break away, take the autonomy to say, these are my choices. I'm going to own that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and I think they understood what 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 it was. I I what what was interesting about the process. You know, we had a big shared drive, digital drive, that the stage managers managed and named and organized in a brilliant way. Um, and so of course everybody was all everybody was seeing everybody's work and and checking out each other's 
um, <laughs> footage. Um, so what was very beautiful, I thought, was that it felt there was a progression or a development that people were beginning to uh, be inspired by each other's work. And so their, their, their work matured. It felt their work was maturing, but in a way that was separate from what Margaret, Roger and I might be doing with them. There was another maturation that was happening just in response to each other's work. Um, and the other thing I suppose I experienced um, through the students is, is feeling that somehow these people who I've never met uh, in the flesh, and I don't know if I ever will meet any of them in the flesh, um, but somehow managing to have a connection with them or having to be able to have had an experience with them in some form. And I, I, my sense from them is that they felt that too, and that there was a that that there was a celebration that that was that was possible. Um, and I'm I'm really glad of that. I didn't really give so much of a chance to talk with the actors after the process was over, just because of the nature of me coming in um, to do workshops. But by what I what I took away from it as an audience member and seeing it all edited together, it was so exciting. And I felt there was an invitation for the audience to have their own autonomy, not just the actors, but for the audience to feel that they were meeting this process in the middle and that it wasn't a coercive experience of this is what you're supposed to get from this artistic cultural object, but actually this is an experience that you are participating actively in as the audience member. And it's revealing a lot about you as you're engaging with it. And then adding to that, the fact that you listen to it via headphones, you can watch it on your phone. It's an intensely personal experience. Absolutely. I think that's absolutely right. Um, the audience was invited into the process um, and the creation, the final product. And for me, hearing about what you guys say about that autonomy and maturation, I think it's true. I think our students are so, it's, it's scary to have to make it on your own, but to have had that experience and then have the film at the end to show how successful that can be. Yeah, what a gift. What a gift for your ensemble. So. That's all I have. You guys, thank you so much for a great conversation. Thank you. It's so good to thank see you. you. Don't yeah, get good to see, see you all. Good luck with Click, and we can't wait to see it. Good seeing you, Sinead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you all.